bandwidth efficient multicast routing protocol, tree initialization phase, route optimization phase, mesh based protocol, core assisted mesh protocol, CAMP. Bandwidth efficient multicast routing protocol, BEMRP, tries to find the nearest forwarding node rather than the shortest path between source and receiver. Hence, it reduces the number of data packet transmission. To maintain the multicast tree, it uses the hard state approach that is to rejoin the multicast group. A node transmits the required control packet only after the link breaks. Thus, it avoids periodic transmission of control packets and hence bandwidth is saved. To remove unwanted forwarding nodes, root optimization is done, which helps in further reducing the number of data packet transmissions. Tree initialization phase. In BEMRP, that is Bandwidth Efficient Multicast Routing Protocol, the multicast tree consists, construction is initiated by the receiver. When a receiver wants to join the group, it initiates flooding of join control packet. The existing member of the multicast tree on receiving these packet respond with reply packets. When many such reply packets reach these requesting node, it chooses one of them and sends a reserve packet on the path taken by the chosen reply packet. When a new receiver R3, as shown in the figure, wants to join the multicast group, it flux the join control packet. The node S, I1 and R2 of the multicast tree may receive more than one join control packet. After waiting for a specific time, each of these trees nodes choose one join packet with the smallest hop count traversed. It sends back a reply packet along the reverse path which the selected join packet has traversed. When tree node I1 receives join packets from the previous node I9 and I2, it sends a reply packet to receiver R3 through node I2. The receiver may receive more than one reply packet. In this case, it selects the reply packet which has the lowest hop count and sends a reserve packet along the reserve path that the selected reply packet has traversed. Here in the figure, receiver R3 receives reply packet from the source S, receiver R2 and intermediate node I1. Since the reply packet sent by the intermediate node I1 has the lowest hop count, which is 3, it sends a reserve packet to node I3 and thus joins the multicast group. Free maintenance phase. To reduce the control overhead in BEMRP, Tree configuration is done only when a link break is detected. There are two schemes to recover from link failure. First, broadcast multicast scheme. In this scheme, the upstream node is responsible for finding a new route to the previous downstream node. This is shown in the first figure. When receiver R3 moves from A to B, it gets isolated from the remaining part of the tree. The upstream node I3 now floods broadcast multicast packet with limited time to live. After receiving this packet, receiver R3 sends a reserve packet and joins the group again. The second scheme is the local rejoin scheme. In local rejoin scheme, the downstream node of the broken link tries to rejoin the multicast group by means of limited flooding of joint packet. In the second figure, as seen, when the link between receiver R3 and its upstream node I3 fails due to the moment of node 3, then R3 floods the joint control packet with a certain time to live value. Now this value depends upon topology. When tree node 
receive the join control packet, they send back the reply packet. After receiving the reply packet, the downstream node R3 rejoins the group by sending a reserve packet to the new upstream node I4. Root optimization phase. When a tree node or a receiver node comes within the transmission range of other tree nodes, then unwanted tree nodes are pruned by sending the quit message. In the figure shown, when receiver R3 comes within the transmission range of the intermediate node I2, it will receive a multicast packet from node I2 earlier than from node I5. When node R3 receives a multicast packet from node I2, it sends a reserve packet to node I2. To set up a new route directly, to node I2 and sends a quit packet to node I5. Since node R3 is no more in the downstream node, node I5 sends a quit packet to node I4. Node I4 sends a quit packet to node I3 and node I3 in turn sends a quit packet to node I2. Thus, unnecessary forwarding nodes are pruned. This mechanism helps to reduce the number of data packet transmission. The advantages includes it saves bandwidth due to the reduction in the number of data packet transmission, easy to tree maintenance, easy to join new node in the group. Having advantages, it also has disadvantages. They are it increases the probability of path break which in turn gives rise to an increase in delay and reduction in packet delivery ratio. Node spends more amount of time for reconnecting due to root repair, so it leads delay in packet delivery. Mesh-based protocol. The mesh-based protocol is used to overcome the limitation of tree-based protocol, such as scalability, that is, in number of sources, and robustness. The protocol, a structure with higher connectivity, is necessary that can connect multiple sources to their destination. Core Assisted Mesh Protocol, CAMP. The Core Assisted Mesh Protocol, CAMP, CAMP is introduced for multicasting routing in ad hoc network. CAMP generalizes the notion of core based trees in introduced by internet multicasting into multicast meshes that have much higher connectivity than trees. A shared multicast mesh is defined for each multicast group. The main goal of using such meshes is to maintain the connectivity of multicast group even while network routers move frequently. The camp consists of maintenance of multicast meshes and loop-free packet forwarding over such meshes. Within the mesh, multicast mesh of a group, packets from any source in the group are forwarded along the reverse shortest path to the source just as in traditional multicast protocols based on source-based tree. It guarantees that Within a finite time, every receiver of a multicast group has a reverse shortest path to each source of multicast group. Multicast packets for a group are forwarded along the shortest path from sources to receiver defined within the group's mesh. The cap uses cores only to limit the traffic needed for a router to join a multicast group. The failure of group Core does not stop packet forwarding or the process of maintaining the multicast meshes. CAMP is designed to support multicast routing in every dynamic ad hoc network within broadcast link. It adopts the same basic architecture used in IP multicast. CAMP ensures that the shortest path from the receiver to the source are part of the group's mesh. Packets are forwarded through the mesh along the paths that first reach the routers from the sources, that is, the 
shortest path from sources to receiver that can be defined within mesh. CAMP does not predefine such path along the mesh. A router keeps a catch of the identifiers of those packet it has forwarded recently and forwards a multicast packet received from a neighbor if the packet identifier is not in its catch. The key difference between a mesh and a tree structure is how data packets are accepted to be processed. A router is allowed to accept unique packets coming from any neighbor in the mesh as opposed to tree, where a router can only take packets coming from routers within whom a tree branch has been established. Therefore, Keeping the branch information updated is one extra challenge protocol based on trees have to face in mobility scenario. Because a member router of a multicast mesh has redundant paths to any other router in the same mesh, topology changes are less likely to disrupt the flow of multicast data and to require the reconstruction of routing structures that supports packet forwarding. The traffic flow from router H is seen in a multicast mesh and in the equivalent multicast shared tree. The fig first figure illustrates the difference between a multicast mesh and the corresponding shared multicast tree. Routers that are members of the multicast group are dark. The multicast mesh and Trees shown in the figure include routers that have host receivers, host that are senders and receiver, and routers that act only as relay. Router G is the last receiver to join the multicast group and does so in the multicast mesh through either router F or H. Consequently, router C does not become a member of the mesh. Figure also illustrates how data packets are forwarded from router H to rest of the group in CAMP. And in a shared tree multicast protocol, in the figure, solid arrows indicate the flow of traffic along the reverse shortest path in CAMP and the shared tree in the multicast protocol. The dashed arrows indicate overhead traffic due to the broadcast characteristics of the communication channel used to connect them. CAMP provides also an alternative way for routers connected to sender only host to join the mesh. Whenever a router senses multicast packets originated at the host directly attached to it, this designated router will join the mesh in simplex mode. If it is not a member yet, the simplex joins request. Just as a regular join request will travel toward one of the available cores and is acknowledged in the same fashion. Energy efficient routing. In most sensor network scenarios, these devices acquire data from environment and send it to other nodes for further processing and analysis. When such destinations are not within the radio range of the source node, intermediate sensor nodes are used as relay. Routing protocol from sensor network are used to transmit messages from source to destination. They are classified into three, unicast, broadcast, multicast. Unicast routing is used to send a message generated by a sensor node to a single destination or sync. Broadcasting is used to send a message from a sensor node to every other node in the network. And the last is multicasting is used to deliver messages from a single source to a set of destination. Multicasting protocols try to minimize the consumption of network resources. For instance, sending one copy of the data to each destination using unicast is not considered as multicast routing.